Hey guys, I'm going to uh, read some facts here. I've just been noticing how foul university professors have been lately, how they have been at the forefront of speaking out, wanting to murder Trump and overthrow the government and kill Trump supporters and the right. And here's a, in a 15 minute search, I knew some of them and I, and I just searched them to get their names in universities. Here are nine professors that in the past few months have basically called for violence or murdering Trump. And I'm sure there's many more. But I believe academia is the biggest threat to our way of life, to Western civilization, because they are the ones churning out new social justice warriors and new lefties and communists. We convert them pretty rapidly and have them join our side, but this mass academia robot machine just keeps churning them out. And that's why they are at the forefront of criticizing us and wanting to kill us. <clears throat> but these are not in, by, in order by any means, but Kathy Detweiler, University of Delaware, about Otto, Warner, the guy from North Korea that was brought back and then died, said he deserved it because he was a spoiled brat who probably didn't like doing homework. Johnny Williams of Trinity University about the Scalise shooting, shooting in Alexandria, Virginia used the hashtag, let them effing die. Dana Cloud from Syracuse University says people who are against Sharia law are fascists and we almost have them on the run. Come down and let's finish them off. Eric Clanton, the professor at Berkeley in the Battle of Berkeley, taught philosophy and ethics at the San Francisco Area College, at a San Francisco Area College, hit Trump supporters with bike, a bike lock, badly injuring one. Yvette Falarka, MLK Middle School, Berkeley, California, I think we all know who she is from BAM, by any means necessary, says there is nothing that is not acceptable when fighting against Trump supporters. She didn't use those words. She said anyone who is promoting fascism, which means, we know what that means, because there aren't no, isn't, are, are almost no one promoting fascism. She means they're Trump supporters. And I don't think any of these people have been fired. Assistant Professor at Texas A.M. Tommy Curry said, in order for us to be equal, the races to be equal, some white people may have to die. Professor Lars Maychak from California State University at Fresno said, hang Trump, the higher the better, and money should be raised to erect a monument for the assassin. Olga Perez Stable Cox from Orange County College calls Trump's election an act of terrorism. And Pale Modi, a Dallas, Texas art teacher, takes a water gun and shoots it at a screen with an image of Trump's yelling die. She did get suspended, but I don't think she got fired. And a, two of these were school, was high, were school teachers, not professors, but basically they're in academia. And I'm telling you people, we are in a war. This is serious. We have to wake people up. Uh, you know, there's many interesting subjects to talk about. The thing we need to talk about is people need to wake up and realize what a desperate situation we, we are, we're in. We need to really get, go after this freedom. You know, I've often had these thoughts in my head. How could we, you know, I, I used to think maybe we should capture a bunch of Muslims or leftist communists or whatever and, and tie them up in a basement and force them to eat steak, shrimp, and the best food ever. Let them ha make them work a little bit, give them great wages so they're wealthy, force them to have fun until they realize that capitalism and a free country is what brings you prosperity and money. Maybe we can force these people into wanting to be free and rich.
because obviously they don't want to be free and rich. But anyway, that's a joke. But it would be kind of fun to catch one of these guys, tie him up in a house for a while, and force him to eat the best food and have the best, have as much money as possible and make him have fun so he sees this is what it's about. This is what capitalism and a free cunt republic is about. Force it down his throat. Happiness, prosperity, and riches. You know, maybe they'd still complain. Who knows? Maybe that's not what they want. Maybe they just want death and murder. But anyway... That's a joke. I'm going to read a poem by Rudyard Kipling, and I'm going to tell you straight up, uh, another YouTuber from Spain, I saw it on his channel, I thought it was good, so I'm just letting you know I'm not plagiarizing his poem. It was written by Rudyard Kipling many, many years ago, and uh, I should know it by heart so I don't have to read it, but I didn't learn it, so. <clears throat> it was not part of their blood, it came to them very late, with long arrears to make good, when the Saxton began to hate. They were not easily moved. They were icy and willing to wait, till every count could be proved, ere the Saxton began to hate. Their voices were even and low. Their eyes were level and straight. There was neither sign nor show when the Saxton began to hate. It was not preached to the crowd. It was not taught by the state. No man spoke it aloud when the Saxton began to hate. It was not suddenly bred, and it will not swiftly abate. Through the chilled years ahead, when time shall account for the date, when the Saxton began to hate. I think Rudyard Kipling was prophetic. I don't know what he wrote that poem in reference to, but it definitely is for today. I believe that the Saxton has been very, very slow in waking up. It's been like poking an old lazy bear. And when I say Saxton, it can be anyone who loves Western values. I'm not necessarily referring to a race, but a man of principle that loves Western values and does not want to be a starving, sniveling, shivering communist being poked into a corner with hot irons and start being starved to death. Or a Sharia-loving Muslim who wants to kill their own children out of honor, beat their women, and bomb anyone who loves freedom and prosperity. I believe Alex Jones has been saying this, and I haven't been watching him a lot lately, but, but I agree with him 100%. These globalists better get on board with freedom and prosperity because the time will come when they have nowhere to hide. They will have to make a decision and the consequences will be grave. When you get freedom-loving people, tolerant, freedom-loving, God-fearing people, or people of ethic and principles, when you get them riled up and they start fighting for their friends and family, it will not easily abate. There will be hell to pay. And I hope, along with everyone else, that it won't come to that. But I, I've mentioned this before. I, I go back to the words of John Brown. 1858, just before he was hanged. I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the sins of this great country will not be washed away except by blood. You know, what What can we say? Can we avoid it? The, if we can wake up enough people and have, have enough people care about evidence and reason, freedom and prosperity, truth and happiness, a bloody war can be avoided. I am a, a student of the Civil War and I know the damage 
it caused to the country. I know the terror, the anguish, the absolute horrible grief that war caused. And I don't want to see it in our day. But anything is worth preserving our freedom because our lives are worthless without freedom. Peace.